Hello everybody, I'm Linda Vargas. Um, I am a professional dancer, a university lecturer, workshop facilitator, um, a parent, um, and an author. I've recently written a book called Did You Pack Your Bag? A Checklist for Mental Baggage. The title of the book implies taking individual responsibility for our mental baggage. In other words, did you pack the ideas and values that you hold in your head, or did somebody else? And my book guides the reader through answering that critical question. It is part memoir and part guide, and it's really quite useful for those who want to seek, or who seek to let go of their mental baggage and who want to be free of the social conditioning that seems to be weighing them down. So the book discusses about, or it discusses the idea that mental baggage doesn't have to be permanent, doesn't have to be intrinsic to who you are, and that just like physical baggage that we take to an airport when we go traveling, its contents can be unpacked, reconfigured, and a repacked in a way that you feel comfortable traveling with. So um, the purpose of the book is to really inspire others to do what I have given an example of. So I start off the book by explaining how the book came about. Um, then I go into a section where I discuss or identify some of the bags that many people carry. For instance, the culture bag, the um, childhood bag, the uh, religion bag, the social media bag, the education bag, um, the adult work life bag, uh, whichever way you want to look at it. We've got many, t many of us have bags within the bags. And so the analogy of a bag is used to understand mental baggage and how we tend to carry something that's not intrinsically part of us that we can actually free ourselves from. Because what I've become aware of over my lifetime is that when we are born into this world as a child, we don't, when I became a mother for instance, we, we don't get, we don't come with a bag, we get given a bag. So, and that bag is pretty much the rules of how you're going to fit into the family you've just been born into, how you're going to fit into the education system that you're going to be involved in, and how you're going to fit into the culture and the religion that perhaps has been assigned to you. So this bag of values and ideas and assumptions slowly gets added to in, during childhood until eventually you'll get to your teenage years. And a lot of teenagers tend to, or by experience I've discovered, they tend to be a little bit even, uh, they become a little bit intolerant of the um, world around them because they are trying to make the distinction between who they sense themselves to be and what the rest of the world around them is expecting them to be. I've lectured a number of types of people. I mean, I've like, taught children, I've taught teenagers, I've taught university students, I've taught adults, mothers, parents, uh, business people. And over the sort of spectrum that I've been engaged with, I have always had, without realizing it until I started to write this book, had the agenda of know who you are. Um, so I'm always trying to help people explore who they understand themselves to be so that they can live a life that is authentic um, and not something that they've just assimilated a program that belongs to someone else or to a system that they don't uh, follow. Or I, um, when I first started writing the book, I thought, oh, this is only going to be for my son and he might just be the only person who'll be interested in it. But I, while I was lecturing, I discovered that um, there are a lot of young folk who really would like some very difficult questions answered and they would like to understand who they are um, separate from what they have been socialized into. In the introduction of the book, I discuss why I explain how the book came about. And actually, um, I, was I was lecturing cultural diversity and I walked in at the beginning of the course <coughs> and I had a lecture full of about 
three to four hundred students, um, all from diverse cultural back backgrounds because I'm from South Africa and so I would say the large majority of my students were black, Indian, colored, white, um, and a few, there were a couple of Chinese and multinationals. So I had a very diverse range of students. And those issues when you lecture in South Africa are always challenging. Anyway, so I walked in as a, as a um, facilitator for the lecture and they were all busy shouting and, and chatting and making a noise and I managed to calm them down and there was a young man sitting in the front row who had his feet up on the desk and he had his cell phone in his hand and he wanted to know what my course was about and as I looked at him I just read his body language and all the years of my teaching just all of a sudden sent a very clear and concise message to myself that I literally had one chance to get this boy's attention before he would sign out and spend the rest of the time on his cell phone and I wanted him to choose my course rather than his cell phone and I had to come up with an answer so Inadvertently, I glanced down and I saw a black tog bag that I had been carrying my laptop in. And the idea came to me to just lift it up. And I held it up for him and I said to him, you want to know what the course is about? Well, I would like you to understand that all of you in this lecture th theatre are carrying um, a metaphoric bag of ideas in your head. And in that bag, you have had a number of beliefs and values that have been given to you or assigned by your culture, your religion, your family values, your social media exposure, your friends, the media in general. And you have got a whole lot of ideas that you are carrying within you. Um, we are going to take everything out of that bag. We're going to put it on the table and nothing is going to be left off, um, off topic. You may discuss anything. And we are going to critically reflect on what you have in your bags. Once you finish that, I'm going to ask you if you would please buy yourself a new bag. I'd like you to choose a bag that's more in line or more uh, of an expression of who you want to become. So... When we look at each item that you have inherited that's in your current bag, and I'd like you to be aware that some of you are carrying perhaps a light handbag with a few things in it, a few ideas. Some of you are carrying a backpack with a whole lot of baggage behind your back that you don't even realize that you've got. Some of you may be carrying a full-on suitcase on wheels and you don't even realize that you've got such a lot of uh, mental baggage that you're unaware of, but you're pulling it anyway. Um, the bag that you choose now for yourself, make it an expression of who you would like to be. And in there, I would like you to then consciously choose from all the values that you have been exposed to, which ideas and values you want to keep and which ones you would like to leave behind. And then we will discuss why. Um, and once you have got your new bag and you start to pack it with the values and the ideas that you feel aligned with, I want you to learn to understand that that bag is your responsibility and so are all its contents. So I'm going to be teaching you or making you aware of taking responsibility for your choices, your thinking and your values and not necessarily living unconsciously and having a knee-jerk reaction because of values that you haven't identified and understood. I found the analogy really useful because um, over a number of um, semesters the students would run up to me and they would say, ma'am I've never forgotten your bag and I'm unpacking it every day and repacking it. And I thought it was such a simple analogy um, and I, it was very powerful and I thought let's um, continue to use it, which I did. And then they kept asking me, ma'am, have you written a book? Because if you wrote a book, we would read it. So I thought, I'm only one teacher. Perhaps I can use 
this um, oral sharing that I've been doing in my lectures and try and transfer it to the written page. Because if I put it into a book, I can reach more pupils and more students and more people than um, if I'm just handling one class at a time. So then I sat down and I thought, okay, I'll write this book for my students. And um, very naively, I thought it would be easy, and it certainly has not been, because I was then launched onto another journey of understanding who I was. So even through the process of writing this book, I have uncovered more and more layers of who I am. And even though I had thought I had unpacked so much of who I was, I've soon discovered that actually this is an ongoing life process. You never really fully understand who you are because you're always evolving. And so as I did that, um, I decided, okay, let's try and write a little basic book for my son to read. Maybe he'll find it useful. Um, my son at that point was about 20, 21. Um, and I gave it to him and he was my pro first proofreader. And his response was so positive and he said to me, Mom, you really need to write this book for other people too. So I thought, all right, let's me begin the arduous, arduous task of trying to put or explain how I have come to understand myself. Because I thought, if I unpack how I have unpacked my baggage, people can look at what I've written and in a way I'll be holding up a metaphoric mirror for them to look at their own baggage. So the book is not really intended as a one-size-fits-all guide to unpacking mental baggage. It's more a, a mirror for the reader to say, oh, look what she did. Um, I wonder what I would do, what I could do, where I got that idea from. And so it's really a metaphoric mirror. So it's part memoir, part guide. Um, the beginning section is basically uh, explaining how the book came about. Then I go into a little brief explanation of the various bags, the culture bag, the education bag, and I, I give my understanding of them briefly. And then I go into the meat of the book, which is pretty much my personal experiences. Um, and I take three case studies in my life. The first one I do is on becoming a mother, because I found that a very transformative experience. And then I do the um, becoming a, a teacher on becoming a teacher, reflections on that, and then I do reflections on becoming a dancer. Um, all of them are distinct and yet connected because what I realized when I started to write the book is that I didn't really understand the baggage that I was carrying until I became a parent, and I was a new parent. Um, and all of a sudden I had to think, how am I going to teach this child and what am I going to teach this child and what values am I passing on to him? And I need to be aware and, and perhaps not be a, an autopilot parent that just presses the repeat button. I'd like to be one that's a little bit more conscious and that I make decisions and I'm aware of what I'm modeling and teaching him. So a large part of the book is me discovering me as I became a parent. And because I didn't have, up until that point, a reason to challenge those beliefs, um, I never really did. And so when he asked the really difficult questions, I had to come up with an answer that he was happy with. I couldn't just fob him off with a repeat answer or stock phrase, you know, that my parents might have used. So. I learnt, as I, as I started to mother him, I, I relearned, if you like, how to mother myself. And I rediscovered who I was from a, a far more authentic understanding. And then, um, as he became a teenager, how my parenting style had to shift. And I discussed many of the challenges that parents are facing today in terms of social media, in terms of diversity, in terms of um, um, diversity in all its forms. And so I go into how I handled his teenage questions. What I discovered as a teenager is that you can't just give a stock answer, or I couldn't just give a stock answer, and he was very clear and intolerant of 
me just saying just because. So I had to give very good reasons and in that process I discovered a lot of things that were in my bag that I could take out, reconfigure, change, put back in a new form, upgrade um, or discard altogether. And so the parenting section of the book is how I looked into my childhood bag and took out a number of issues that I had experienced in my childhood and reconfigured, reflected on them and decided whether they were worthy of keeping or whether I should get rid of them. Whether I should pass them on to my son or whether they um, needed to go. In the section, for instance, where I reflect on becoming a dancer, I provide another whole perspective of coming to know who I was through the experience of dance. And so through my dance bag and unpacking my dance bag, I reflect on a whole lot of ideas that I inherited there that I then um, chose to leave behind or chose to keep. And all of them are very carefully selected. They're not just my whole life experience. It's not just a biography in the sense of, oh, I've told you what happened in my life. I've very carefully selected experiences and learning that I think may be valuable to others or may make them think about their values, may challenge for how they have been brought up. Um, so through the lens of becoming a dancer or the experience of becoming a dancer, the unpacking of the dance bag provides another perspective of knowing the self. Then in the section on becoming a teacher, reflections on becoming a teacher, I discuss many educational issues that I inherited as a teacher because I began my career as a high school teacher of boys and I very soon discovered, I mean most of them at that point, the school that I was assigned to had boys that were only two years younger than me. They had failed so many times, they were still in the system, poor things. and. Um, the age difference was very small, so they, they didn't really want to listen to me. So I had a lot of challenges. And they asked really difficult questions, and they didn't want to learn, and they didn't want to read, they didn't want to write, and they were just often demonstrating their resistance to learning and, and reading through being naughty and rowdy and impossible, actually. So I quickly had to learn how to hold their attention, how to answer their, in, their questions that were challenging in a way that they were satisfied, and to find tools, teaching tools, that would hold their focus. And I developed that very quickly, a sink or swim style. Um, but then I graduated to teaching dance, which is another whole approach to um, knowing the self. And then I um, became a university lecturer in, in diversity studies. And that became another whole spectrum of understanding who I am via the questions that really challenged my most sacred beliefs on many levels. And so they would ask, and I would say to them, you can ask me absolutely anything. And because I gave them carte blanche, they did. And so a lot of their questions made me question the education system that many of them were um, experiencing and related to the life that they were about to begin in the world that they were entering. And so I, in that section of the book, I have discovered quite a few ideas that in my opinion are outdated, outmoded and definitely needed to go. And I discuss why and um, give the reasons of what I or give what I have replaced it with. So, in those three case studies of becoming a mother, becoming a dancer, becoming a teacher, I am unpacking who I understand myself to be. And I've been very fortunate because um, the book has got the most beautiful artwork in it. Um, which was done by um, Lee Scott, who's a wonderful artist. And they are very evocative of, um, well, they provide evocative images of mental baggage. And so the book is not only 
um, written in a way that you are going to um, be reflecting on ideas, but the visual images will also be stimulating reflection. Um, I've also written it in a, I mean, at the beginning of the book, I say the book is dedicated to the reluctant reader because most of my students don't like to read. So I wrote it for people who don't like to read. I wrote it in a language that they are easily able to access. I, there's nothing academic or fancy about it. It's written like um, I lecture, organically, naturally, conversationally. And so it's not a difficult read. It's a very easy read. And I've written it in bite-sized chunks so that if you have 10 minutes and you want to read a little section, you can read a section, put it down, close it, and think about it for a week before you come back to the book. You don't have to feel obliged to carry on. Although I have found that a lot of the people that have proofread it already say that they want to carry on and they are quite engaged with it. So its purpose is, in, even though I've dedicated the book to young people, and I say to young people and those who um, take care of them. In other words, teachers, parents, anybody who's taking care of young people, anybody who's guiding them, anybody who's in their lives. It could be a corporate boss, actually. If you're somebody who's got a young person who's just come onto your staff and they're 18 and perhaps you'd like to understand them better, I think you'd find the book quite useful too. So it's pretty much so, how do I become aware of the human programs, and there are so many of them. Only when I actually give my workshops do I go into in-depth explanations of the complexities of the human programs that we're just unconsciously, so many of us, on a daily basis assimilating. So how do we unpack those? How do we reconfigure them? And how do we um, update them? So pretty much like your cell phone, when you need to put on, or your laptop, when you want to put on new software, you've got to delete the old first before you upload the new, and while you're uploading the new, you have to understand that the new might be something you don't quite understand, but you've, you've got to get used to it. So there's a process of transition from the old to the new. And I have spent my life unpacking my conditioning now, and my bag's very light now. I have very little in it now. And I'm very aware on a daily basis of what I'm putting into it and what I'm not. What I'm watching on television, what I'm not. What I'm taking in on social media and what I'm not. What my friends' conversations might be uh, stimulating or, or triggering within me. Um, my responses, are they knee-jerk? Are they, are they conscious? Um, and I unpack, obviously because I'm a South African, I unpack in great depth, I think, um, racism and uh, gender intolerance and understanding oneself through a, a limited perspective of only a culture or a um, ethnic background. So I explain and how I have come to understand that. The book is not intended as a one-size-fits-all approach to unpacking mental baggage, not even remotely. So I do not have any ideas of grandeur that this is going to be a guide for everyone. What it will be, I hope, is a catalyst for people to say, gee, I have a very complex bag of my own. I better start to learn to take responsibility for it. I think the world is full of a lot of folk who are not conscious of how they are choosing to behave, speak, and, and a lot of it is what I call just automatic response to a program that's just been loaded a long time ago and you don't even realize it's sitting there and it's pretty much like the subconscious mind driving all your choices, or all our choices. So it's, it's for those folk who would like to grapple with the challenge of saying, okay, I realize now I've got a whole lot of stuff in my head. I need help to unpack it, so how am I going to do that? Um, and then when I do repack it, how am I going to learn to take responsibility for it? Without realizing it, I've written a book at quite an auspicious time because there I have 
become aware of a very um, challenging time for young folk in terms of navigating um, diversity and navigating the programs of diversity in the sense of cultural diversity, racial diversity, gender diversity. Um, and many of us are not given the opportunity to reflect on how we can take our own power back, take agency over our thinking. In other words, be responsible for what you're thinking and choosing to let go of things that really don't serve you or anyone. And I use the analogy of if you've got items in your bag that are explosive, when you go to an airline, they say to you, did you pack your bag? In other words, you have to be responsible not only for your own well-being, but for the well-being of others. And if you have dangerous items in your bag, dangerous beliefs, dangerous assumptions, dangerous values, perhaps you need to go and repack your bag and perhaps you need to rethink what you are holding on to as a value that is potentially a threat to your own personal well-being or to others. And then taking responsibility for that um, choice that you might have just had a knee-jerk reaction and now you consciously choose. So I'm running a lot of workshops at the moment now which are run in conjunction with my book because the book definitely will help in its own right but in conjunction with the workshop it becomes far more profound. So I'm running workshops uh, simultaneously to the book um, to try and help anybody who would like to understand how to reconfigure their mental baggage. Um, you will find the book now um, on my website um, www.stampdance.com S-T-A-M-P-D-A-N-C-E and the stamp part is social transformation and multicultural perspectives. So my entire life's work now is devoted to trying to help people understand diversity of values that we are all carrying in our beliefs and how do we transform them into something that's better and how do we uh, allow others to choose what they are um, what they what they put in their bag the contents of their bag really because someone else's bag is none of your business unless it's dangerous and if it's dangerous then we need to sort it out but the um, the book is also available on Amazon. Um, it's an e-book, um, a, a paperback edition, and I'm hoping that as time goes on, um, it will be very widely available in, in a number of platforms. I'm so grateful for the opportunity of sharing what I have um, written in my book. I really hope that all those who read it um, find something useful and are perhaps inspired to change their life in some way for the better, to live free from things that they don't feel comfortable with anymore. Um, you can contact me on my website, um, stampdance.com, www.stampdance.com. And um, I look forward to hearing from you and hearing your responses to the book. And if you would need to get hold of me for workshops or any other details, please feel free to contact me.